guys, Rich here from Dynamotive, home of Unichip Australia. You've purchased yourself a Hyundai i30N plug and play Unichip X kit. Basically what I'm gonna do today is give you a rundown on the installation process and all the things you're gonna need in order to complete it. All right, as far as tools go, you're gonna need a seven and a 10 mil spanner. A 10 mil socket, preferably quarter drive with a bit of an extension, a pair of side cutters and a Phillips screwdriver. Okay, so you've opened up the box. We'll go through exactly what's gonna be inside it. A few of the obvious ones, the plug and play harness for the car itself, the Uni X, the bracket, bridge plugs and all the fixings for it as well as some cable ties. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fix the Unichip itself to the bracket. There's two small five mil screws. The Unichip itself is gonna go on the outside of the bracket with the fold facing away. Use the screws and the nuts supplied to secure it. Okay, you would have noticed there's a couple of sachets of some dielectric grease. The dielectric grease is to be placed on the two big plugs inside the Unichip itself. So to familiarise yourself with some of the other parts that are inside your kit, you'll notice that there's this green black plug here. Basically what that is, it's a bypass plug for the Unichip itself, we call it a bridge plug. If you were to ever remove the Uni X and leave the harness on the car, this simply plugs into the harness itself and takes the place of the Unichip, returning all the tune parameters to standard. Inside the same bag, you'll find an Allen key with two small self-tapping screws there to secure the lid to the Uni X itself down the track. Moving on to the car itself, you've opened up the bonnet. First thing we're gonna do is disconnect the negative side of the battery. That's this one over here with the minus looking terminal on it. Remove the lid. It's a 10 mil nut. Back off the nut and pop the terminal off. The ECU itself is located behind the battery here. These are these two big black, black plugs here. To release the factory plugs, there's a little tab on the end of each of them with a lever. Push the tab in, lift the lever up all the way until it clicks. Remove the plug. It's exactly the same on the other side. Don't force them, they will come up and that's it. Grab the Unichip harness and separate the plugs from the block. You do that, the same principle is by lifting the lever. You don't need to force them, they will separate. On the Unichip harness, that's done by pushing this little tab, lifting the lever, and then separating the block from the harness. So although the same in size, internally they are different. One of them does have six large electrical terminals, which does correspond with one of the plugs on the computer. As you can see here, this factory plug has got the six large terminals, meaning that it, meaning that it will fit to only one of the plugs. Starting with the terminal with the six large pins, line it up, it will fall into place and secure it by lowering the lever. This harness here will now sit behind the computer. So it's a little bit tricky to put it down, but it will sit behind the computer with the Unichip ribbon facing forward and direct it across towards the ABS module against the firewall. Bring the Unichip harness itself around and again, sit it on the factory computer with a little bit of a push down, lower the lever and it locks it into place. Righto, same thing with the second plug. Take the factory harness. It can only fit one way. So if you do attempt to put it in the wrong way, it won't go in. If, that, if that's the case, flip it over and you'll find that it actually falls into the, the keyways properly. Lower the lever, lock it into place. Again with this one, push it down towards the back of the computer and it'll sit next to the other factory plug. Take the Unichip harness, place it on the computer again, 
lower down the lever to hold it into place. The Unichip blocks themselves are pretty robust and so is the factory harness, but just to take the load off it, what we do is we fit a cable tie that's been supplied around these two harnesses here, cable tying them together and just increasing the strength of it. Right, now we're gonna fit the Unichip itself to the harness. Now, take the lid. There's two black plugs on the inside of the lid. They are different sizes. Now, you'll notice that they're crossed over. They're supposed to be. The left-hand side will line up. That's the larger of the two pins. Without forcing it, place the plug over the top of the Unichip and just with a little bit of gentle pressure, push it into place. Like I said, it will cross over inside the lid. So grab the opposite side and the same thing applies. Using the two screws and the Allen key that we went through earlier, just push the lid down onto the Unichip itself. It does create a seal. Place the screws through the small holes in the top of the lid and tighten them up with the Allen key. With the lid securely pulled down onto the uni chip, now we're going to mount it. It picks up the mounting bolt on the outside of the air intake here. It doesn't matter what air intake you've got, whether it's an aftermarket or the standard one, they all pick up this same bolt here. Use the 10mm socket to undo it. Place it through the bracket. Just take the twists out of the harness while you do it. The wiring harness itself will face forward and just place it down next to the air box there. Retighten up that bolt. Okay, the last thing we need to do, tuck the harness down behind the ECU just to neaten it up a little bit, reconnect that battery. Using the same 10 mil spanner as before. And refit the battery cover. Now that the Unichip itself is mounted, I'm just gonna cable tie the harness up towards the Unichip blocks, just to this side here, the negative battery terminal, just to keep it neatly out the way. From there, you're right to start the car, take it for a drive. To remove it, it's as simple as doing everything we just did in reverse. Beautiful.